would appreciate it. Please stand. Thank you. Uh, the next item is the approval of the agenda. I want to add an item. It's not really school recognition, but it is a presentation, so it would be number three under school uh, recognition. I move to approve the agenda as amended. Thank you. Second. Second. All in favor? And the motion carries. Thank you so much. Okay. Each, uh, each month we at, at this first meeting, we recognize uh, a student and a teacher from one of the public schools in Zebulon, and tonight is Zebulon Middle School. So, Logan, would you care to come back and join me? I want to read what uh, was written by, uh, about Logan. The Logan Dreyfus was selected to be recognized as an outstanding student at Zebulon GT Magnet Middle School. He is a shining example of a Zebulon Middle Cougar on the proud. P, proud of achieving. Logan always strives to do his best in and out of the classroom. He was inducted into the National Junior Honor Society as a seventh grader. R, respectful of self, others, and property. Logan is kind to students and staff and respectful of school of the school environment. <coughs> Excuse me. O, organizing for success. Logan always works hard to complete all assignments and assist other students if they ask for help. W, working for, the sa for a safe environment. Logan is respectful and responsible in the classroom, hallways, and cafeteria. And L, learning to lead. Logan is a member of the History Fair team, which was, which has reached the state finals competition. He also won third place in the regional History Fair competition. Logan is a member of the Boy Scouts of America and has earned the second class rank. Congratulations, Logan. Sandra Lindsay. I wonder. <laughs> okay. Very well. You you may, and but I'm going to read. <laughs> so, okay. Could y'all hear that? She couldn't be here. This the assistant principal uh, came to accept for her. So. Okay. Ms. Sandra Lindsay exemplifies a true outstanding professional deserving of recognition for the many ways she goes above and beyond to ensure success for all. She teaches sixth grade mathematics at Zebulon Gifted and Talented Middle School, a magnet school of excellence. She leads her peers and students selflessly, setting high expectations and working diligently to rise to any challenge. She believes in her students seeks unique ways to meet the individual needs of all, and fosters a classroom environment that develops student leadership skills. She works to build relationships with families and partners with community stakeholders to maximize opportunities and support for her students. Further, she serves as a mentor and leader to her peers. We are proud to have Ms. Lindsay as an invaluable member of our Cougar family, family at Zebulon GT Magnet Middle School. 
and think she is highly deserving of being recognized as an outstanding educator. So in her absence, I will present this to you. And can we give her a hand? <laughs> I'd like to recognize Don Bumgardner, who I consider a very good friend. And when uh, <laughs> when uh, these were presented to the other outgoing commissioners, Don was recovering from surgery on his knee. And so I, I see you're still not kicking field goals, but you're getting around. So, <laughs> so Don was a commissioner for 26 years. Yeah. And uh, as I said, a very close and good friend of mine. The clock says, Commissioner Don Bungardner, sincere appreciation for 26 years of service to the town of Zebulon, January 6, 2020. Thank, so you, thank you, Don. Appreciate you. I guess after 26 years, I ought to have a whole lot to say, but I'm not going to say much. But I will say this, look out over this crowd and, and I still see smiling faces and I love to see that every time I get in front of somebody. It, it brings me a lot of joy to, uh, to stand here and say, well, I spent 26 years behind that desk up there. Uh, a lot of responsibility, a lot of enjoyment, and some, some heartaches at, at, at best, I can assure you of that. I, uh, I really don't want to belabor this, but I want to leave, leave one little word to these distinguished members up here as I leave. You need to remember one thing if you don't remember anything else. The things that you think are correct and the things that you think are right is not always what the rest of them need. Keep that in mind, always. Okay? Again, thank you so much, Bob. And uh, again, for the 26 years I spent here, I do appreciate it. Each month we allow people to uh, come before the board. Did we have anyone? Well, just for you to know, it's an open uh, public comment period, uh, no longer than 15 minutes and no longer than three minutes for any one person. Um, and you can come say what you want to to the board. It's not a time to have an interchange between uh, the board and you. But if you have something you want to say, it's an open mic for you to do that. However, you do have to sign up uh, before the meeting. And I think it's, what, five minutes before, 10? 10. Ten. 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 Ten minutes before you have to sign up. So no one signed up tonight, but I wanted to be sure that everybody knew that that was available. <clears throat> Excuse me. Next we have the consent agenda. I make a motion we approve the consent agenda. Second. Motion made and second. All in favor? And motion carries. Thank you. All right, next we have a presentation from uh, Denise Now with the Chamber of Commerce giving us an update. Mayor and members of the board, congratulations on your recent board retreat. Hard to believe that it's already been a year since the last one. At your 2019 retreat, the chamber brought Liz Hiram to present on the North Carolina Main Street program. And today, Zebulon is a part of the Downtown Associate Community Program. Um, also at last year's retreat, we connected you with BDD Brewing. And in just a couple of months, maybe weeks, um, they'll open our first tap room in downtown Zebulon. So what a great amount of excitement and progress since then. This evening marks the third quarterly update for our 2019-2020 partnership. 
You've partnered with the Chamber um, for business retention and expansion and to be your economic development partner and liaison. So because the Chamber is connected to both public and private sectors, we are able to activate quickly and to respond in the econo economic development space. Um, partnering makes it possible to implement priorities from both the town and the Chamber's strategic plans as we prepare for the future that's no longer coming, it's actually here. Our partnership also allows the town to utilize their resources effectively. Um, by contracting with us, you're able to make that a little more affordable. Um, as I've shared in the past, economic development is part art, part science. Uh, the bulk of what happens in the economic development space happens as a result of relationship. Uh, development um, is sometimes intangible, it's often nuanced, but it's always critical. Without a partner building relationships, growing and nurturing these relationships, opportunities can be missed. So a perfect example of this was last Friday's lunch tour at Legacy Crest Court. That's a commercial building that is um, currently for sale here in Zebulon. Because you depend on us to represent Zebulon, um, CBRE, the broker for the building, was looking for ways to promote the site. He was able to reach out to us for support. We could then connect him with some other brokers, also with some of our partners at um, some of the other economic development groups, and host that event that highlighted the facility. So the goal, selling the facility um, to the next ideal business, will positively impact Zebulon's industrial tax base, and that's what we want to do, right? We want to continue to grow that tax base, and we want to attract the businesses that we feel like are healthy for this community. In January, the Chamber attended a first-of-its-kind hotel develop, developer day. Um, the Chamber team pitched to 10 hotel developers over the course of the day, which was actually a lot. Um, I was there representing Zebulon as an ideal location for a partner hotel developer, and Maria was there representing Zebulon business strengths, um, the needs and the interests that we have for our community. Two weeks later, one of those developers actually said they liked what they heard enough to want to come and tour Zebulon. Um, we shared the news of the town's acceptance into the North Carolina DAC Main Street program. They toured downtown, they toured the Mudcat Stadium and our industrial park. We were also then able to connect him with Michael Clark, our planning director, um, to learn about some of the residential developments that are happening and growth for our community. Um, you'll also be happy to know that homework that the chamber had done already was impressive to this developer and showed that we're willing to do the work to attract partners that we think would be a good fit for Zebulon. Um, a little over a year ago, the chamber surveyed key businesses to record data on what they are looking for in a hotel, and that was really um, something that was encouraging to this developer. In February, we held our second Emerging Business Roundtable. You may recall we launched this back in November as a way to bring emerging business leaders together for an open conversation over a potluck meal. We're excited to report a few highlights. Um, first, the group has grown by two new businesses, which supports entrepreneurial growth. Um, these business leaders are now connected with one another and are creating their own network of support. Um, this matters because they are, as they are able to do this and help each other grow, they can give each other advice and be very transparent and candid with one another. Second, by way of an update, Old Raleigh Distillery has continued moving forward, and you all got to see the video that Michael and Sheila shared um, at your retreat last week. If you're following the Chamber's newsletter, you've probably seen some of his other videos. They're really great, and he has such a great sense of humor. It's, it's really fun to watch. But he's, he's actually done a really good job of um, recording the storyline from start to finish, and um, so he's kind of unpacking some of that as we go. Um, third, members of this Emerging Business Roundtable group were able to give BDD Brewing some very candid insight and support for an idea that they had. As a result, um, they'll be hosting a street party in a couple of months, and it's going to be amazing. Um, and why this matters is you're now seeing public-private partnerships come together making a difference, and then these public-private partnerships are picking up on hosting downtown events. And then th what this means for the town is, by these partners doing this, facilitating and helping each other grow, 
The town is then able to help facilitate the event, but they're not having to run the event, if that makes sense. Um, it's another way to share what um, uh, Ben Braddock is doing in Rocky Mount that you guys heard from. It's important to have the town involved and wanting to see growth for these kinds of events. It's also important to have these public and private partnerships with businesses who are actually out there making it happen. So we thought that was encouraging. Um, in other economic development updates, the former Theo Davis building was sold last week. Um, I think it's so encouraging to know that a building that belonged to a family that means so much to this community didn't sit there for years and years and years. Um, it, I think, was just a little over a year that it was vacant, um, and it's great for us to just be looking forward to what's coming next. Um, we're also delighted to share that the business owner is already interested in leasing the space. There's already a person interested in leasing it. Um, that person actually because of the nature of his business, we connected him with Brandon McCraney from Old Raleigh Distillery, who gave him some positive input on how great it's been to work with the town and the chamber um, for getting his business up and running. And this potential business owner is now connected with Michael from the planning department, and um, I think it's just in a few days we have a meeting set up for him to share his idea, not only with the town, um, but also with key departments like the fire department and um, Wake County and a few others. So it's just really good to see that things are happening, and they're happening sooner. I mean, they're happening even quicker than they used to happen, which is fun. Um, as the chamber continues growing in the economic development space, we're privileged to now have one of the members of Wake County Economic Development on our board of directors. Um, GlaxoSmithKline also has a new person serving on our board. Um, and then also just to update you on the annual meeting that comes up two weeks from tomorrow. Um, it's Tuesday, March 17. It's at the community center again. A couple of you are already registered for that. If you're not, let us know. We have some spaces for you guys. Um, there's an opportunity also at that event for you to meet the new site coordinator for GSK. So they have a rotation that happens about every three or four years. And so Troy Webb will be stepping down. And at the annual meeting, he'll actually be handing over the baton to the new site coordinator. So it'll be a great opportunity for you guys to meet um, her as well. Um, and then also, because it's St. Patrick's Day, BBB Brewing will have some kind of green beer or green something to drink for us. So, um, And then um, as I uh, wrap up, at your April 22nd work session, we're actually going to do a deep dive into economic development, what the partnership looks like, what the partnership can look like going forward, and then just an opportunity for some of you who are newer on the board to hear um, not just the storyline of where we've been, but also the storyline of where we're going for economic, economic development. Um, and so a couple of partners who will be at the conversation for that work session will be Wake County Economic Development. I think some of you have met Ashley Cagle. Um, and then also the Economic Development Partnership for North Carolina will be at the conversation. So we look, at, look forward to this being a great opportunity for you guys to get the, to know them better and to know why it's so important that we have these partnerships. Um, no doubt, Zebulon's growing. Um, without partnerships between the town and the chamber, Zebulon's not represented at some of these local area, county, and uh, regional meetings. Um, and we count it a privilege to work together with you on that. And we feel like it's important that we continue creating this healthy climate for economic development. So I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions from the board? Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, if I can share just a brief update, um, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce uh, is um, very well connected to what's going on with the coronavirus. Um, and as I was finishing up preparing for this evening, there was actually a conference call um, that included um, the CDC and a few other, other groups. Um, so I will be able to listen to that afterwards. So I'll share the results of that with you. But it's just super important to the U.S. Chamber of Commerce to connect with local chambers of commerce because what's going on with the coronavirus is very important to our businesses and it may affect a lot of us. So just want you to know that we're keeping our nose to the grind on that and we'll let you know if there are any other updates on that as well. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, each year um, we have um, 
what I've referred to as philanthropic money. Are you going to go over that, Bob? No, I'll let you do that part, and then I'll call on the individuals to come speak. How about that? So I'll let Bob, finance director, explain that. I'll take over from there. As part of the upcoming fiscal year 2021 budget process, this is the strategic plan funding or nonprofit funding process that you're all aware of. Just a reminder, January 7th, January 6th, the amended new nonprofit policy was adopted by this board. Then the new application was posted on the following day, January 7th, on our website and through our social media outlets. Those were due back on February 10th. Seven applications were received, and each of the groups, if they're here tonight, will have three minutes each to speak on their group and their funding request. That's all I had. Do you want me to call them, or do you want to? Do you want me to call them up? No, I'll call them up, if that's okay with you. I don't want to steal your thunder. Okay. All right. We have, let's see, three, seven that want to speak tonight. And as Bob said, you have three minutes each. There's a light system at the podium here, on the podium. Green's go, yellow slow, red stop. So please pay attention, because I'll have to call you down if you don't. I don't like doing that. The first to speak this evening is the Do For Him Ministries. Thank you for allowing me the privilege and the pleasure not only to apply for a grant for this cycle, but to share with you in a brief three minutes, which is next to impossible, why we're a good fit for that. Do For Him Ministries just saw when I was reading over what the town of Zebulon's strategic plan is to have a small town community and a vibrant downtown, how our project that we're working on called Do Over Decor can fit right in that. We have, um, our mission statement is to come alongside struggling women so that they can heal and grow. And so in the past, we've done that by creating programs and curriculums that we can train women in self-awareness and biblical truth and workforce readiness. But what we saw was we needed a different um, outlet for that. And Do Over to Core gives us an opportunity to, to kind of meet three needs, not just for workforce readiness, but that they can, women can come into our ministry in the heart of downtown and they can learn to repurpose furniture as a way to turn their principal learning into practice so that they can go back out and not necessarily do a job of repurposing furniture, but have learned the character and the skill necessary to get and maintain a job. And so we're real excited about that. And then we're going to have all this repurposed furniture. So what do we do with that? That helps us as a nonprofit ministry become sustainable and also bring some revenue into our great location, which is right there on the strip and, you know, on Arundel Avenue right at Sycamore Street. So um, that's exciting for us, not only for sustainability, but to bring in some revenue for the downtown area. Um, but one of my favorite things about it is our community involvement that Do Over to Core will offer for our community. Because while we will also be helping women that have come through our classes and are actually clients of ours, we will be opening up that workshop space where we can use the, um, to repurpose furniture for art classes, all different kinds of art classes, um, mosaic making and some hand-built pottery and all kinds of um, painting on windows so that the community at large will be able to come in. They can bring their small groups, they can bring their um, ladies groups, whatever they like, and we can probably fit about 15 people in our art space. And that will bring um, also a lot more people downtown. And we can host birthday parties, et cetera, right there in that space. So we were so excited by the um, Oh, the fall, the Christmas time right in front of our office that by Dallas Pierce Realty that we saw how awesome it would be to have more people right there in downtown getting connected. So we're working hard on getting our space to be very inviting for Do Over to Core, and your money will help us get art supplies, tools, et cetera, for that. So thank, thank you. you. 
All right, East Wake Education Foundation. Um, good evening, my name is Shannon White. I'm the director at East Wake Education Foundation. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to speak tonight. East Wake Education Foundation offers equitable access to all families with children birth to five in Eastern Wake County by offering free preschool services to families that otherwise could not afford a program that costs. Our program is unique because it, the parent stays with the child <coughs> on site while they're participating in our activities. And it allows us to partner with the parents um, on appropriate child development learning, answering parenting questions, and assisting families with additional services when needed. Tonight, we are asking funding for our FACES program, which is our Family and Child Enrichment Services, um, which is held in our resource center located in Wendell. Our uh, normal day includes play-based learning, um, which includes children experiencing free play, uh, music and movement, story time, and activities that are math, science, and social and emotionally themed learning. We also offer a free preschool uh, class uh, to three to five-year-olds. And during preschool, they, are, they participate in circle time where they talk about the calendar and the weather. And they also learn about letters, numbers, how to write, how to use scissors. And our teacher uses three evidence-based curriculums when planning and implementing her lessons. All of our lessons plans are patterned to strengthen the skills of Wake, that Wake County Public Schools use when evaluating and determining a child's readiness to begin school. When looking at Zebulon's Vision 2030 strategic plan, um, our program fits underneath the small town life by increasing connectedness in the community. So even though we're not located here um, in Zebulon, we're just five short miles away, and we're offer offering services to Zebulon citizens that aren't currently offered in Zebulon. Um, we are a safe, family-friendly facility that allows parents to connect with neighbors and community members. The past years, we have had visitors from Baxter Bees. We've had the Zebulon Police Department canine unit come out. We've had Tryon Family Dentistry come out. And just today, we had your very own Joe Moore come out and read to our children, and he did an amazing job. Everybody enjoyed it. Um, so we do, our, we do our best to connect the towns um, that we serve to our families by bringing people in from your community and introducing them to our families. Um, on our monthly calendar, we include activities and events happening here in Zebulon that, are, that pertain to our families in the proper age group. Um, and uh, we are also participating in uh, Superhero Day at Whitley Park. So our resource center is a place for Zebulon preschool children and parents to gather with daily activities that enhance early childhood learning for children and for parent education. Thank you. Thank you, Shannon. Okay, Family Violence uh, Prevention Center, also known as Interact. <clears throat> I'm Allison Strickland, uh, the Chief Development Officer from Interact, and I am so happy to be here. Um, and so grateful for the past support that Zebulon has provided. <clears throat> in 2012, and again in 2016, Wake County had a distinction that perhaps we would not wish to have, and we hope to not have again. That is, we had the highest number of domestic violence fatalities of any county in the state of North Carolina. One in four women and one in four men will be a victim of domestic violence, sexual assault, or stalking at some point over their lifetime. For 42 years now, Interact has been the only comprehensive service provider serving victims of domestic violence and sexual assault for all of Wake County. Last year, we served uh, just over 52,000 people. What might surprise you is that 164 of those we served identified themselves to us as residents of Zebulon. We find that when people encounter someone who's been a victim of abuse, a lot of times the first thing they say is, well, I don't understand. Why wouldn't they just leave? There's so many barriers to exiting an abusive relationship. Perhaps 
lack of employment, lack of education, lack of transportation, not knowing a safe place to go. Those barriers are um, even more compounded when you're talking about someone who's living in a rural part of our county and then thinking about how to navigate the courthouse, how to get downtown, what do they do, and, um, and having a lack of maybe additional affordable housing. We add to that barrier that for people who are trying to leave an abusive relationship, their chances of being seriously injured or killed go up by 75%. So it's really important that during that time, Interact is wrapping our arms around people and helping to provide safety and hope. Um, what we're really proud of is that for those who complete our shelter program, we have an emergency shelter, 45 beds, 85% of those we served last year went on to safe and stable housing, which is phenomenal. The national average is about 50% of those will return to an abusive home. In the coming year, what we hope to do is expand a very important program called the Lethality Assessment Program that helps law enforcement, when they encounter someone who needs interact services, connect them on the scene of the incident. It is a remarkable program. We're having great results at other parts of the county, and we hope that with your support this year, coupled with some support from Blue Cross, we'll be able to expand that to Zebulon. Thank you. Thank you. Three minutes can go fast, can it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Martin Luther King, Jr., Breakfast Committee. Mayor McKinney, you skipped one. Pardon? You skipped, skipped one. one. Oh, I'm sorry, I did. Excuse me, Laura. <laughs> I wasn't trying to push y'all out, I, <laughs> I promise you. Actually, for some reason, I had already checked you off. Uh, Miss Zebulon Organization. Hello, hey. good hey. evening, everyone. I'm Julie Walsh. I'm Miss Zebulon 2020, and here with me is. I'm Kaylee Wadsworth, Ms. Zebulon's Outstanding Team 2020. Hello. And I just want to say thank you for all that you have done so far to support the Zebulon organization. And it truly is a wonderful organization that ha helps young women and the Miss America organization, which is the overall broad in charge of everything. They bring so much scholarship and so much help into young women's lives, creating so many opportunities, connections, and friendships between young women. And I truly see this organization as a self-improvement course, and it has been for me, personally. For a long time, I struggled with anxiety and depression, and it was all because of my disability, dyslexia. But thanks to this organization, I was able to have the opportunity to find confidence in myself and become a well-rounded young woman because of it. And I think that it's so important that these young ladies in the future get this opportunity as well and get that scholarship. Another thing is, is that it helps me with my education. And since I'm dyslexic, I have chosen a smaller school to go to, and it is a public school, a public college, which costs a little bit more. So having that extra scholarship money is so important to me, and I'm so thankful for that. Now I'm going to pass it over to Kaylee for a little bit. Hello. So I am a teenager. I am 16 years old. And without this organization, I can guarantee you guys I would not be where I am today. With this organization, I've been able to help out with the Boys and Girls Club, volunteer at local nursing homes in Zebulon, help out. I've been at the parade, in the parade. I've been at downtown events. And not only with giving us the finances that we need help our organization, but we're feeding it back into the community of Zebulon. It will come full circle. And as a teenager, receiving a scholarship to go toward my education, as I want to be a pharmaceutical scientist in the future, which means I'll have to go through some pre-med, it will definitely help me. And I want other girls like me to have this opportunity to gain scholarship and you to apply community service principles all throughout your reign. And this has truly made me a better person. And being able to have a mentor like Julia and going into college and application process, I'm telling you, it's a, a life-changing experience. And I want other girls to have the same opportunity as I have. And you guys would make a huge impact in that. Thank you. Thank you. 
Yes, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it, and really hope you think about helping us out and helping girls in the future. Thank you so much. Well, thank y'all, and I apologize again for jumping over. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. We got you up there. That's why I came. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Okay, now we'll have Martin Luther King during your breakfast, Laura. Good evening. Um, I am requesting funding for the community uh, Martin Luther King breakfast where the community comes together and we fellowship and um, eat breakfast and uh, basically um, that's it. We usually have a guest speaker, someone to come in and give us uh, some information, but that is what we are for. And this was something that was started by the town a few year, a long time ago, a few years ago. Um, and thank you. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Preservation Zebulon. Good evening. I'm Mary Beth Carpenter. I'm Executive Director of Preservation Zebulon. I want to thank the town and all the commissioners for our past funding that you've given to Preservation <coughs> Zebulon. Uh, that funded our Preservation Day that was just held on February 8th. It was a roaring success. We had hundreds of photos turned in and scanned. We had uh, six more people interviewed on tape, and we had a Rex Tippett video that a lot of people saw. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Shannon, for attending. Um, our plans for uh, request for funding for this coming year, we would like to hold a historic home tour in the spring of 2021. We uh, plan to have five to seven homes open for people to tour. Uh, in the proposed historic district. We um, ask um, to use historic Wakelon building again, as we did this year, for registration, and we plan to have a vehicle or shuttle to be able to take people down to the house, the tour area. Um, uh, we will be having an annual meeting again this year where we're gonna be presenting more on our Zebulon Memory Project. We're gonna have more film clips of the now 18 hour-long interviews we've taken and the six short interviews. Um, our project for funding meets all three goals of the strategic plan. It meets the small town life, it meets the vibrant downtown, and it meets the growing smart goals. Uh, right here in Zebulon, right in your own backyard, uh, we thank you for your continued support and your partnership with Preservation Zebulon to raise pride in our town and to educate the area about Zebulon's historic structures and contributions to the area. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Beth. And finally, uh, share his glory. Good evening. Um, Shares the Lawyer is about partnership. Um, I don't know if you're aware of this, but this coming April, out of our partnership with uh, Brown Bag Lunch Ministry, well, we have served over one million lunches in this part of East Wake County. Every third Saturday of the month, we're in partnership with Interfaith Food Shuttle, and we distribute food to uh, those in need at the Boys and Girls Club, um, coming up on 500,000 families. So I'm about small town. Um, imagine living in public housing and being a child, and you're the first person in your family to graduate from high school, but you have aspirations of going to college. Nobody there to help you. We were able to help this young lady go to college. Um, we had a corporate attorney contact us and help her to work through all of those problems that she would have run into because nobody in her family could help her. Most of our kids are from abuse, domestic violence, and homeless and at risk. Um, we do a mentoring program. Every year at August, we take all the kids from Zebulon and Wendell to the pool for a week and we feed them. We teach them about Christ and uh, we have a lesson for them. They learn how to swim. This is for kids who can't afford to swim. We try to keep the kids in this community active in our community by going out and serving. Uh, some of our kids have been recognized by the president, by 
uh, national organizations and by some charities um, for their community service. We also keep up with their community service hours. It's helped some kids get into college. Um, it's also helped them get a free scholarship to go to college because of their resume, because of their community service. So we're always looking out for our youth, trying to let them know we're not about a handout, we're about a hand up. And my partnership is with some of these organizations here because when you have kids, you have parents. And so as we're out working with the kids, we try to reach out to the parents. We try to let them know the resources that are in this part of our town. Because everything that goes to Raleigh doesn't necessarily come back to this part of the county. So we have to fight. We have to struggle for everything that we do for this part of our county. So we offer these kids hope. We partner with mental health agencies to help some of these kids because some of them have emotional issues. We also help them understand that no matter what your circumstance, you can rise above it. We're working on a clothing closet because we found out a lot of our kids that go to school, they get bullied because of their color of their skin, the color of their hair, and because of the way they dress. So we have a community closet that we're working on so we can dress our kids, we can give them hope, we can give them promise. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, all good presentations. Uh, we now will... Okay, we had one person uh, sign up for, what, we, what we're going to have is budget comments. Public will have three minutes to present topics that they want considered in the 21 budget. And we've had one person sign up from that, so uh, that person will get three minutes. Uh, John Macon. Good evening to the board and town manager. Mayor Matheny. I'm here on tonight uh, to um, request uh, consideration and approval for funds for a stormwater infrastructure project located within the town limits of Zebulon. I am here on behalf of the homeowner. Uh, the infrastructure project that we're looking at, uh, that I'm requesting, would consist of a reinforced concrete pipe uh, transversing the underground on Flowers Avenue near the intersection of uh, West North Street and Flowers Avenue. Uh, the remainder of that project would also be a junction box and a concrete V-swell to fix an ongoing problem with uh, drainage in that area. I have had uh, conversations with uh, 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 Director of Public Works, uh, Ray, and Town Manager Moore. Uh, they are fully aware of the request that I'm here before you tonight to, uh, to make. Um, we're a little ahead of schedule because the, uh, the engineering has been done. There is a drainage analysis that is currently on file with Zebulon. Uh, so uh, we know that the project, uh, the feasibility is there for this project to take place. Uh, it's just a matter of requesting the consideration and approval by the board to do this. Um, both uh, Town Manager Moore and uh, Public Works Director Ray. Uh, I've had uh, multiple conversations with both, uh, including an on-site uh, review by both people uh, to take a look at the uh, problems that we're having. So they did an on-site survey. Uh, back in July of uh, 2019, I had an in-person conversation with uh, both members. Uh, the invitation was made to uh, the homeowner uh, located at that address near the intersection of West North Street and um, Flowers Avenue uh, to uh, pay out of pocket and it was also rejected because the belief was that the, uh, uh, the, the scope of work we felt like was within the purview of um, uh, the town of Zebulon. Um, I will be speaking further on this as, as the time goes by. Uh, I'll probably readdress this in April, um, and hopefully we will get consideration for this. So thank you for your time and consideration. I yield the rest of my time back. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. 
Okay, there was no other person that signed up to speak on the budget, but there will be other occasions where it would be available. Uh, we, we always have a public hearing, by the way, before adopting, so stay tuned if something comes to your mind. Uh, next, we go to old business, and we're going to talk about Ordinance 2020-42, Chronic Violators Ordinance. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the board. Uh, the first of the planning items tonight is <coughs> amendments to Chapter 95 of the Unifo or the uh, Code of Ordinances. Um, specifically, this has two components. It's amendments uh, to Section 95.50 and 95.51 to provide clarity in terms of language. It's also uh, creation of Section 95.56 to establish a chronic violators ordinance. And this is in conjunction with the parameters that are authorized by, um, by North Carolina General Statute 168-200.1. Um, Right now, the way the process works for all uh, violations, um, and we'll use the uh, tall grass and weeds as an example, is staff is informed of the violation, staff will conduct an inspection, staff will then send a violation notice, um, and we'll have a follow-up inspection. Um, we may send a final notice, and then which requires a final inspection, and then the staff has to prepare the abatement order, and then the town will abate the violation. The proposed uh, ordinance will actually take out uh, several of these steps when a situation is classified as a chronic violator. Per uh, North Carolina General Statute, chronic violator is uh, somebody who has violated the ordinance three or more times within a calendar year. The new process, the first violation would still have to go through the standard process, but each violation thereafter would actually skip several of these steps. Specifically, staff will be informed of a violation, go to do an inspection, and then if this is the second offense within that same calendar year, Steph will then prepare the abatement order and the town will go forward uh, to correct the violation. Um, and the uh, cost will be uh, um, levied upon the property owner for the abatement of that violation. Now with a lot of code ordinances, um, there's a spectrum of uh, considerations. Um, on one hand, with very strict enforcement, typically it results in higher costs, additional staff, um, but you also do get, uh, as a uh, balance, um, a situation such as Celebration Florida, where everything is very pristine. On the other hand, with a la or the other side of the spectrum, you have a lack of enforcement, less staff, less resources contributing to that, and in situations you might have a characteristic such as Detroit, Michigan, uh, shown on the screen. The unique aspect about this is the proposed amendments will allow for quicker time for enforcement to take action, eliminates three to six weeks from the process if it is a repeat violation, a second violation within the same calendar year, and actually decreases the time that the property is in violation. So while typically additional regulations would result in increased costs, the proposed amendment will not only uh, improve staff response times, improve uh, site conditions on the property, it actually decreases the amount of costs that are, um, the town has to expend. So essentially it creates a win-win. So with um, the planning board did discuss this, being that it's a general law ordinance in our code of ordinances, they don't need to make a formal recommendation, but there was an informal recommendation of support by that board, and staff recommends approval of the proposed amendments. So with that, uh, staff does have a sample motion available if the uh, Board of Commissioners does I decide to move forward in support of this um, uh, amendment. And I'm available if you have any questions. Questions from the board? Yes. So where, if we go back to the picture of Celebration, Florida, and Detroit, mm -hmm. where do you anticipate this new ordinance will help us to fall? This, uh, this new ordinance would actually allow us to be somewhere right around in this range. Okay. Um, where we're not going to be super strict enforcement, but does give the town more resources to expedite that enforcement, um, which then results in the property being in compliance more frequently. Um, does the violation notice itself come with a fine, or is that just a courtesy notice to let uh, the property owner know that they're on the radar and that something needs to be addressed? Um, it's, it's more than a courtesy notice. It's typically an invitation to open up a line of communication. Um, it does not have a fine itself, 
Um, but the goal is to be able to interact with these property owners, let them know that we do have uh, regulations pertaining to the maintenance condition of the properties, and hopefully be able to work with them to prevent them from going into a chronic violator status. Um, when that is applied, we find that to be a lot more effective than just heavy-handed sending notice after notice after notice. So we're really uh, going to be tailoring our um, enforcement procedures in the future to really encourage the open lines of communication discussion, but with the understanding that we do expect compliance from, uh, from the community. Great, thank you. Other questions? Thank you, Mike. Okay, what's your pleasure? I'd like to hereby move to approve the text amendments to Chapter 95 of the Code of Ordinances as proposed and approval of the ordinance number 2020-42 as submitted finding that the proposed amendments are consistent with the Vision 2030 Strategic Plan as adopted. Okay. Second. Motion is made and second. Other comments or discussion? All in favor? And the motion carries. Thank you. Okay, comprehensive land use plan and transportation plan presentation. Quick change gears here. Okay, tonight is the first of the really uh, comprehensive public engagement activities in terms of a comprehensive plan. Um, as you're aware, last fall we did come before you to uh, request funding authorization to begin the process to do a full rewrite of our comprehensive land use plan and our transportation plan. Um, essentially, these documents are critical towards the future direction of the, uh, the town of Zeglin um, and actually are uh, partially, uh, actually now required um, for the community moving forward. Um, all land use decisions realistically need to look back upon these two documents. It also provides the opportunity for the town to uh, receive funding from agencies such as CAMPO, uh, North De Carolina Department of Transportation, Federal Highways Commission, um, and other resources. It also provides a direction for the development community to provide a realistic expectation of what we want to see the town move, uh, moving forward. Um, and I use we kind of lightly because um, as a staff member, um, as in consultants, we can provide language, but the essential component is really engaging the public. And that's where this discussion begins. Um, tonight we have Gary Mitchell and Kelly McCormick from Ken Did Kest, um, as well as Roger Henderson, uh, Bessie Gilroy, and David Heider from Remy Kemp and Associates. This is the, uh, the all-star um, consulting team that the town has partnered with moving forward to um, create uh, two documents that realistically will envision what Zebulon will look forward to in the future. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Gary. Thank you, Michael. It's been called a lot of things, but now I can add all stars to the list. I like that. That's good. Good evening, uh, commissioners. So we had a uh, similar conversation in the 5 o'clock hour now with uh, commissioners, and uh, this is the first thing we are doing on this project before we go to your community, other agencies, organizations. So uh, look forward to the conversation. Um, we had asked for about an hour, Mayor, between you and I, um, if we could have the red light come on at about 8.30. I think that will be plenty. Oh, I was going to give you three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> So let me give you some background very quickly. Um, this is partly to give you some uh, uh, information about the process that we're heading into in the months ahead, but also have some questions for you. So uh, we'll move to those fairly quickly here. Uh, but just to put names with faces, um, all five of us are actually here tonight. So there we go. So we look forward to working with you and your community over roughly the next year, a little bit more. I'll tell you more about that shortly. Uh, but on the team is Ramey Kemp and Associates here in Raleigh, and uh, we have uh, worked in other places now, and uh, uh, they are focused on the transportation plan aspect, and we are focusing on the comprehensive plan, but they are purposely meant to work hand in hand, as certainly transportation affects everything else we'll be looking at through the uh, comprehensive plan, but uh, Ramey Kemp uh, has that transportation specialty, on our side with Ken DeKees, we do this type of work around the country, uh, working with small and larger cities on their plans and their development codes. Um, you're going to hear a lot about the concept of community character from us as we go through this process. 
Uh, we feel so strongly about it that we wrote several books on the subject, so uh, we'll talk about that as we go. As far as timeline, I mentioned roughly about a year. About a year from now, we hope to be coming back to the commissioners uh, with a proposed plan, transportation plan and comprehensive plan, but along the way, uh, we are starting uh, tonight and over the next few days and in the months ahead on this early engagement effort. There's gonna be three rounds of town hall meetings starting with one tomorrow night. And I'll have Michael come back and tell you more about that at the end. Um, then we're gonna spend a few months here looking at where you are today as a community and produce a report called Zebulon today that will be partly facts and figures but also reflect what we've heard from the community. Um, we'll come back to you at that point with the planning board and give you an overview of what we heard and what we've learned about your community that are important for the future uh, side of this plan. So we'll turn to that in the summer period, looking at Zebulon tomorrow. And these comprehensive plans are really meant to look out 10, 20 years down the road. I always say when you're putting pipes in the ground and, and building roads and things like that, it's for the long, long term. Um, so uh, that's our perspective going into that. And then we'll come back next fall to you once again and the planning board in a workshop type atmosphere present the overall draft plan at that point before it goes out to the community uh, for the public hearing process. So that's where we're headed over the next year. Uh, as I say, this is, uh, this is stepping back and looking at the big picture of not only your community, but the entire area uh, that's affecting your future. And really, it's, it's about the things that we've highlighted there in yellow. Um, uh, we're gonna hear all types of ideas, wants, desires that people would like to see here in the future. You know more than anybody that there's only so many funds and so much time uh, to get things done. So it's focusing in on what you can control as a town or what you can work with other partners to accomplish as you heard tonight in some of the presentations, but getting down to a document that gives you strategic actions, specific actions you can take to get to outcomes that you're trying to achieve. And there's the partnership theme at the end once again. So, when we start these processes, I mentioned we're looking uh, far into the future in some respects, but we always like to start with where, you, where you've been, how it all started here, how you got to this point. And at this point, um, I'd like to put some questions to you for the first ones. Um, on the left side of the slide, it talks about some ways that Zebulon is the same, perhaps, and we know it's different in more and more ways every day, but. Um, what are some ways that Zebulon is pretty much the way it was 10 years ago? And this is open discussion. And by the way, Kelly is taking notes for us, and uh, just for our purposes, so uh, don't be concerned. We're just taking some notes. The, um, the buildings in the center two blocks are basically the same that they were then. Now, there's different occupants, and there's been different awnings put on them, but the building structure themselves has been pretty much the same with <coughs> one, two having been removed. Uh, there are now vacant lots, but still there's a lot of similarity. That's coming on with some changes, but uh, for the most part, it's pretty much like it was. There's a lot of the residential surrounding downtown has not changed. Um, there's been some improvements on some, some dwellings, but uh, there's not been a whole lot of new structures, new housing going in. Um, probably reaching out two blocks maybe, roughly. There's been some infill in some other areas, but not particularly in that that I can think of. Can you think of any in there today? Where you live? Here tonight. Yeah. So, you know, it's pretty much the same, which is not necessarily bad, but I mean, you know, it's just the way it was. All right, it's so easy to watch. What's different? It's different <laughs> every day, every week here, right now. More traffic. <laughs> that was the first word said in the Bible. Let the second word be traffic. <laughs> <laughs> and the third? Well, looking back, it, 
at these pictures, uh, there has been some road changes, road structure changes. Uh, for example, the, the four lane was not here uh, when we had a fire station like that. Uh, I don't know what year class that is, but I'm sure it's way back in time. Uh, uh, obviously the growth, the explosive growth, uh, Wakefield being annexed, the growth that's out that way, the growth that goes back around towards Walmart out that way, the ball stadium. How long do you want me to talk? <laughs> well, I only get three minutes soon. So. <laughs> No, it's, uh, I mean, there, there has been significant change. I, I was compiling a, um, something for a talk I gave some, some time back, and, and I came here in 1970. Uh, there was roughly 1,500 people here, and now we're, I don't know, 55 to 6 and exploding with another 4,000 houses of roughly coming on board now, and that's probably the tip of the iceberg, so it's been a lot of change. And along with increased traffic and, and some of the other changes that Bob talked about, we also have some, is that me? No? Okay. We also have um, kind of a cultural shift as there are people that are coming in from outside the area, and so it's no longer just a small core of the same people that have, you know, grown up, you know, gone to, you know, the school that is now this building. And so, you know, we have changing needs because of that as well. I think it's his microphone. Really? Yeah. Okay. I thought somebody had a hammer beating on a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, gee whiz. It's hard for me to cut the 10 year mark because stuff blurs. Uh, you know, uh, it, it's hard to believe that Five County Stadium came in the early 90s and has been here that long, but there's been upgrades, you know, to that over the years. Uh, some perhaps within the 10 years. Uh, I know that the four lane highway is more than 10 years, uh, but uh, things have happened in, in Wakefield. Uh, we annexed that. It was probably more than 10 years ago, but there's been a lot of growth and there's more coming uh, in, in that area. Uh, I'm, we're, we're excited about some of the stuff that's going on downtown. And, and, uh, I know we still got vacancies down there, but you know, we're moving, I think, in the right direction on that. Um, 10 years ago, we didn't have a greenway. Now that's underway. Um, one is anyway, but I mean, well, more than one really, but in, in any event, that's something that's new that's coming in that uh, I think people will use, be part of the recreation program. And uh, we've seen uh, various upgrades in the community park and the other parks as well. Uh, that uh, some have been additions and some have just been maintenance and upgrades. But there's a variety across the board, I think, of uh, what we're doing. Somebody else Zeblin, the community center, Zeblin Community Center, yeah. um, U.S. Foods. Um, I don't know if that's ten, over no, ten. That might over be over ten. ten. Yeah, it is. But so was the stadium, and I, I threw that out. So <laughs> go for it. 
Anybody else? I think that just as we're starting this revitalization process, we've started to attract more and more um, different kinds of enterprises and businesses that are interested to become part of the community. And so touching on what Bob said about the, the parks, you know, like our Parks and Recreation Department as well as Public Works Department has have really stepped it up in major ways to be able to make some positive impact in the community. And we understand working on their planning as well at the same time. So. Indeed. Um, one that I'll add to the list because we've heard it already today is uh, adopting the Unified Development Ordinance. And that's another tool to get the outcomes that you want to see and make it easier for this, the town and for the builders. So. Let me move on, and um, these are some things that we had listed ourselves just uh, in getting ready for this process and figure they will be on the table, whether it's the growth issues that we've talked about, but as is mentioned in the strategic plan discussions, not losing that small town feel and charm, um, economic considerations, being an interconnected community, not just transportation wise, but through events that you have and, and just that sense of community. Downtown revitalization, certainly on the list. Infrastructure, roads, water, wastewater, all, all components. Uh, the five county stadium area certainly is a focus. And um, in general, just any city that's at this stage of growth and transition, just being focused on livability amenities for your residents and for visitors. So these are the pieces that you will see as we work on the comprehensive plan. Uh, growth capacity being that infrastructure component, are you ready? to uh, service and absorb the growth that's coming. That will also be the connection to the transportation plan, back to the comprehensive plan. Then certainly land use and development issues, housing and neighborhood uh, considerations, economic development, recreation and amenities, and that special area planning, downtown, five county stadium area, certain corridors, et cetera, that may rise to the top. Some quick numbers, um, this, these are the numbers looking back to the 2010 census. Of course, we're approaching census day very quickly here. Uh, we know that these numbers are probably on the low side, Mayor, because they're estimates from what happened 10 years ago. So, um, but examples of other numbers we look at in the Zebulon today phase, just looking at uh, some of those indicators like income, which deals with certainly your retail capacity to have Things we've heard already today, once again, things like grocery stores, uh, different restaurants, um, looking at the workforce uh, factors that uh, factor into economic development. Um, this is a, a guessing game item that, uh, so all of you people that were in the previous meeting, lock it, um, can't, can't give it away, but um, if you think about all the homes that were on the ground two years ago, and of course this is an estimate, probably on the low side, but uh, about 1,700 homes what percentage of those 1,700 were built before the year 2000? What would you think that percentage might be? Oh, a large percentage. I don't, I don't know. 85%? 85 percent? 85, nine. Okay. Anybody higher or lower? <coughs> All right, the number on that one, 39. And, uh -oh. um, wow. So again, these are some of the census estimates that we'll get fresh numbers here in a few years, but um, that percentage, of course, is just gonna keep dropping with all the new housing construction that's happening. But we always look at these types of numbers because when we do these conference plan processes, often it gets caught up in the new and growth and the edge of the community. We can't forget about the old established neighborhoods. So let me ask you a question yes, sir. on yes, that. Sir. Is that 39% what was built prior to 2000 or yes, sir. built between? Yes, sir. So 60% of the homes now were built between 2000 and 2017. Exactly. I'm so astonished. if you add the last few years to that, imagine how oh, high I, the percentage. Oh, yeah, I know. Uh, that's, uh, that's really astonishing to me. That's and some of those communities I mentioned that we work with that have had minimal new housing construction since the recession, you know, their number is more in that 85% range so that so much of their housing stock is aging and will need upkeep and it's a challenge for communities. You have the opposite challenge of so much new construction and if, as people have mentioned, that hoping that that holds up, well not just hoping, making sure that it holds up over time, uh, strong neighborhoods. A few other numbers, um, we took uh, 
all the folks that were in Zebulun last year, according to census estimate, of course, um, what percentage of those would be in the 45 to 64 range, which we label the prime earning years, people that are in maybe that, that top of their career um, progression, um, working toward retirement, some of us. Um, so what percentage of all your residents do you think that might have been? I'm afraid to guess that. Yeah, why don't you just tell us? <laughs> and, and before I show that number, you know, these are important because it can factor into, again, the retail and, and restaurants that you can support uh, based on income and other factors, uh, whether you're going to have a number of folks that are working toward retirement and may not want to leave, so they're thinking about what are their housing options to stay here in Zebulon. But that number is 18%. That is a relatively low percentage compared to a number of places we work with. Uh, so another component is to look at the percentage, young adults basically up to mid 40s, 20 to 44. And that percentage by estimate last year was about 30%. So what I take from these numbers, we're gonna of course look at the entire population range, um, is that there may be a, a fair amount of senior population in Zebulon, and then also we know there's an influx of families and kids. So just looking at that population distribution has implications for traffic, of course, uh, school needs, parks, all these different things that the town has a role in. Does that imply that um, those new homes being built were being built by people out, the majority were being built by people outside of these age ranges? We would like to know that. We would like to know where are those folks coming from? Are they people that were already here? Some percentage that are now moving to these new homes. Are a lot of that home construction entirely new people to the area? I would suspect a fair amount are new. Are they from nearby towns moving to a new opportunity? So What's the dating on these percentages? These are 2019. And, oh, and they once are, again, okay. estimates from the census, but. Okay, um, I'll see that now. Uh, I didn't so know you're, you're taking estimates from the census, but the census was done in 2010, and we've had all of this construction and new builds right, and, and right. a larger, you know, we're increasing by what is it, Michael, four point something, and how many people a day? Yeah, four point something right. a day. So, I mean, I, I'm, I just need to understand if, if you are, making these assumptions based on data that's no longer applicable and valid. This is a starting point because it's at the federal census level. It's their latest estimates. They do estimates every year based so on. I don't find years. any of this useful right now. I don't, I don't either, but it's a starting point. Okay. And it's the reason the census information is useful is because it's the one thing that you can compare almost nationwide. Hey, everybody out there, make sure you get your census done. Absolutely. <laughs> so anytime we're late in a decade, we're in this point where you're waiting on the new numbers that will reflect, hopefully, what's happened. But we're going to have the other sources through your realtor community and others of what numbers are actually out there in terms of new housing units. So, so this is a starting point to then dig deeper. Okay. Sorry, Bob. All right. Let's look ahead. And we are at 815. So um, I always like to use this slide because of the to-do list analogy that, as I said earlier, we're going to hear all types of ideas, things that you could do as a town to make this a better place. What can you actually get done? Where do you have the resources, the partners to, to get accomplished? Um, so we, you're going to hear the word priorities from us throughout this process. We're always thinking in terms of what are the trade-offs and across those topics that I listed, you know, whether we do a park improvement versus a street improvement, uh, those types of decisions that you grapple with in annual budget and other processes. Um, and then the, the Dilbert cartoon is always that everything can't be at the top of the list. Something's got to be first that we work on. So as I mentioned earlier, we look at these conference of plans as that long range outlook, but at the end of the day, it needs to come back to what do you and your staff do next week, next month, the next six months. So it needs to have that strategic aspect as well. So on the strategic aspect, just a coincidence that I used traffic as an example, um, but I mentioned earlier that I like to use the college football ranking analogy that uh, if you have a top 10 set of teams, the only way another team's gonna get in that top 10 is if somebody drops out. 
So the whole time we're having these conversations in the months ahead and over the next year, we're constantly thinking about what's rising to the top that we hear over and over, or the data points us toward that, that that's the need. Um, wastewater treatment plant capacity is a great example. Uh, that's a fact in some cases that you have to deal with, even though you may have other wishes on the list. So, so we try to uh, build a list like this early on and then keep revisiting it. So I had another community recently where I was trying to get a fairly well-rounded list to reflect all those topics in the comprehensive plan, uh, but that was their list. So um, I have a sense from our five o'clock session that that's partly what our list is here, just knowing what's happening right now. Uh, we certainly are hearing those concerns. But um, as our next discussion item, I wanted to ask you to help us start to build that list. We had some uh, thoughts in the five o'clock hour. We're gonna be asking these same questions of your residents when we meet with chamber and other organizations. Um, but if I could just go down the row, and this is our final wrap up item, Mayor. Um, things that you would put on this list as your top priority starting this process, it may change along the way as we present information as you hear from the community, but um, what are things that you would put on this list that are most important for this plan to address? And I think I'll start at that end. Well, one thing uh, with all these people moving here and with a town of friendly people, I think we need to do a much better job of getting new residents up to speed on what we offer, how you can get connected. And is that done today through chamber or other organizations? There's really no formal process or anything going on right now. We're okay. kicking around some ideas. Okay, excellent. Yes, ma'am. Your top priority right now. <laughs> I would just think when we saw traffic, I said we need some more stoplights here in Zebra. To manage traffic better? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Ro roadways, the road system. I think that, that, I know that causes the, some of the traffic, but that, once that's fixed, the traffic will work its way out, I think. And is, is it all aspects in terms of road conditions, maybe local streets or Size more? of streets, yeah. And getting, getting people to the major roadways, whether they need to get right. in and out of town, okay. By the way, I should have mentioned, here comes, um, as I said, we have Ramey Kemp working with us on the transportation plan. Mm -hmm. As we have the conference of plan discussions, transportation is certainly in the mix, but I'm gonna quickly turn to our transportation experts when we get into those topics, and they're gonna be having discussions as well for the transportation plan. But I, I think that's gonna be at the, toward the top of our list. Mayor, why don't I come back to you last, and uh, sure. you can have the final word. <laughs> Infrastructure, um, sidewalks, um, we have a lot of aging uh, uh, pipes, water um, that's probably antiquated. Um, at some point it's got to be upgraded. If I could ask on sidewalks, is it uh, <clears throat> new sidewalk in some places, but also uh, upgrading older sidewalks? N um, new sidewalks. New, new. Yeah. Okay. Um, we got folks walking in the streets, uh, coming from one community to another one, and uh, it's amazing somebody don't get run over every day in some of these communities. So. Yeah, I saw it today somebody step off the curb just to get around a tree or something. Yeah. And, so. Yep. Okay. So I, I, I think certainly we do need to. Um, address crosswalks and uh, as well as new sidewalks, we also need to upgrade, upgrade some of the ones that were put in many years ago. I think that um, those need to be looked at. And I gotta say that having had Ramey Kemp present in the past about traffic impact analysis, I haven't been overly enamored. So I'd really like to see some very thoughtful work put into what you're going to give to us considering traffic impact because I feel like the the, the scope has been short-sighted in in some of these presentations that I've heard when 
Ramey Kemp has come before us on the behalf of developers. And so I really would like to feel confident that we're going to be getting um, plans, both with the comprehensive use plan as well as with trafficked impact um, that are going to meet the needs of our community now, but meet the needs of the community 30 years from now. And I realize that there's going to be growth that can't be anticipated, but I, I need to feel comfortable that, that you're looking into this with a lot of heart and a lot of thoughtfulness. Absolutely. Uh, one thing that we try to do in the comprehensive plans is plant seeds in terms of things that I can tell you, you won't be able to do today as your size of community could be a staff level just uh, or resources, but it's in there for that 20 year horizon that it's something we need to work toward. Okay. And that could be from traffic management to your infrastructure improvements that you're working your way toward a big ticket item that can't happen yet. But we hear you. Mayor? Well, I'll go back to the first item on here in the land use uh, plan. Where, where are we going to allow growth? What type of growth are we going to allow there? That all ties back into what type of streets you need, you know, so they, they do run hand in hand. But I, and we, we, you know, we've looked at some of that under while we were developing UDO, but I think it's going to take a further look um, as to, you know, where is our new industrial sites? Where are um, multifamily housing? Where is uh, uh, new grocery stores? Because you get, and I think within 20 years, I'll be pushing up daisies probably, but within <laughs> 20 years there's gonna be a, a need for more grocery stores because you know, three grocery stores can't serve 35,000 people. So where are you gonna put them? Uh, that's the sort of thing that we need to really be looking at is how do those we provide space and where do we provide it for those services that those people are gonna have to have in order to live here. Absolutely. One thing that I would add to that list that we've mentioned in earlier discussions is where does Zebulon High School go someday? And I have actually talked to the, uh, the district superintendent and also uh, we spoke to the school board, uh, our school board representative that now is the time to be looking at that and, and uh, while land is available in, in proximity to where you want a school to be. And so I fully agree with that. You know, we just need, it. I don't think we have the rooftops to support a high school yet, but we will at some point. And as you mentioned, the, the folks that do grocery stores and other development are watching your numbers too, and they're watching right. for those thresholds that, so exactly, you need to be ahead of where you would like to see certain right. things land. Right. Absolutely. Don't pay catch up. <laughs> All right, let me wrap up. These are some uh, quotes that we often use. Uh, there's lots of quotes out there about planning, but um, back to Councilmember Baxter's comment. Um, uh, this is what it's about. We can have all these dreamy conversations, but if we don't give you the tools now and into the future to get there, that's what this process needs to be about. So I will wrap up there, Mayor, and um, we, I'll let Michael tell you more about uh, the, he knows all the details about the town hall meeting tomorrow night, but as I mentioned, there's gonna be two more rounds of town hall meetings in different parts of the community, so. All right, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, this is just a quick reminder. Um, tomorrow will be the first of the full community inter uh, interaction sessions with a town hall style meeting. Uh, it'll be at 6 p.m. at Wakefield Central Baptist um, in their fellowship hall. Um, that'll be the primarily focused on the everything north of 264 and 64. The second um, will be on uh, March 25th, which is a Wednesday. Um, that'll be everything south of 264, 64, and that will be at the community center, um, once again at 6 p.m. And then the final one, which will be full community wide, as well as focus on uh, target focus areas such as Five County Stadium and downtown. Um, that'll be on. Uh, April 15th, uh, tax day, um, at 6 p.m. at the community center. Uh, each of these will be open to the entire public. Um, there'll be opportunity for folks to come and share uh, their ideas. We'll have independent small focus groups and break into sessions. It'll be a very interactive session, and hopefully everybody can be in attendance. Thank you. Mayor, we didn't have
ask if there were any questions of us to wrap up. Okay, let's ask. Anybody got a question? Yep. So you talk about one of your success stories being Loudoun County, correct? And is that with uh, the traffic side? Is that with the comprehensive plan side? Because quite frankly, I know quite a few people that live in, in Loudoun County and, and they've been struggling with with how things have been developing throughout the years and they feel like they've been left behind. I certainly don't want us to ever feel like some of the members of Loudoun County do right now. I'm not sure what that's about. We are just getting under contract with Loudoun County to work on their the development code to start the process. Okay, yes. all right, cool. We get to deal with all their problems. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, board comments. Shannon, I'll start with you tonight. Okie dokie. Um, so there's been a lot of discussion about COVID-19 and worries about what's been going on and, and, and the impact that it's gonna have on the United States. And I'd just like to make sure that everybody is aware that right now there have been six people in the United States that have died from this virus, but we have 22 veterans that lose their lives every single day. So we need to put into perspective here what this, this virus is going to, to maybe make people sick. There's not going to be a whole lot of folks that, that pass away, certainly less than in China because our, our medical system is much better. I en encourage people to wash their hands frequently. Um, stay out of church if you're sick. Don't cough on people. Just do things that, that are really uh, no-brainers. And please don't let this stop when this virus scare is over. Let's just make that common practice. Um, in addition, Meals on Wheels, is a wonderful organization in our community and they currently need people uh, to help perform driving duties. So as a little community outreach call, please um, contact them if you have one hour a month to be able to dedicate to that time. Um, again, everyone needs to participate in the census. It's really important for how our town gets funds distributed. And so if we have an accurate count, it just means that we get um, the money that is legally what we deserve to get. Um, I would like to uh, just make a public thank you to Detective Wanamaker for um, some really forward thinking uh, in some uh, reacquisition of funds um, recently, That's just thinking outside the box and I'm so excited that we have that going on in our, in our police department. And finally, I'd just like to wrap up by saying that we have daylight savings coming up soon. So um, Joe, maybe a little, um, just a thought here that I would like to put forth that at some point, maybe the town vote that we're not gonna do that nonsense anymore. We will never have to switch <laughs> back and forth. So, you know, just putting it out there for us to knock around. Thank you. Okay. Liam. Nope. No. I'd like to thank the town staff for the work on the retreat we had um, a few weeks ago. Enjoyed working and getting to better know the rest of the board. We've got a, a lot of work ahead of us. Here, here. I want to, uh, I, I don't think I commented on this, but the, the people that spoke uh, for the, again, what I call philanthropic money, philanthropic money, that decision will be made uh, later as we work on the budget. So. I don't know if anybody was expecting that tonight or not. I meant to clarify that, so that's all I have. Joe? Thank you, Mayor. Um, just for the public to know, we've got a work session here on March 18th. Uh, it'll be in this room at 7 o'clock. Uh, well, first of all, just a general overview of what a work session is. That is a time for us as a staff to get some feedback from the governing board. The governing board is not making any decisions at that time, but. Um, because they're giving feedback, it's some pretty robust conversations. So I encourage uh, those to come out. The three items that we'll have before the board is uh, use of this complex. So right now, the use of this facility, use of these grounds have to come before the board. And so we'll give, uh, get some comments from the board on uh, whether they want to retain that authority if they, or if they want to delegate that. Uh, we'll also have a similar uh, setup as to what you saw last night, but it will be with the 
a new chapter in our comprehensive plan, the Parks and Recreation chapter. Uh, we call that more uh, informally the Parks and Recreation Master Plan, so we'll have some feedback and some dialogue with the board on that. And then lastly, uh, with the adoption of the Unified Development Ordinance, there's a couple of development tools that the board now has available to them, one of them being the plan development district process. Um, now that they have that tool, we need to uh, take, take this opportunity to put in some um, tests and to put in some uh, practice on uh, going through the PDD process before PDDs actually come before you. So Michael is putting uh, together a PDD, what we call PDD 101 session for that work session on March 18th. And with that, let me recognize Bobby Fitz for some budget transfers. Yes, thanks, Joe. I just need to report a couple of budget transfers that were uh, done. Uh, governing board moved $1,000 from group insurance to FICA. Uh, and administration moved $700 from Crinton and Coppin to Parks and Recreation Special Events. Uh, police moved $3,500 from Zebulon Night Out to Parks and Recreation Special Events. And from Streets moved $1,000 from Contract Services to Parks and Recreation Special Events. Those last few were for uh, uh, contrib contributions on uh, Hay Day and the uh, tree lighting festival. That's okay. Fine. Thank you. Is that all you have, Jeff? Yes, sir. Okay. Is a motion to adjourn? I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. And second. second. We're adjourned.